Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm Sister Naomi. And I am Sister Miriam. And we'll be hosting Sabbath School Online. Let's start by greeting everyone who joined us this lovely morning. Welcome to Sabbath School, children, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, children. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, teachers. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, Jesus. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School, everyone. I hope you had an amazing week with your family and friends. I know that God has been good to me this week and I praise him for it. What's your praise report for this week? Now that we've welcomed everyone, let's pray. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed Sabbath day that you have been with each and every single one of us. Father God, we ask that we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that, Lord, as we come together as one in Christ, we ask that, Lord, that you will bless our families, bless our friends. Keep us from harm's way. We ask that you will allow us, Lord, to increase in your word and your wisdom and your truth. We ask that we may continue to be the light for others and we may speak of your good name of your death, your resurrection, and your coming. We ask that, Lord, that you bless our family and friends. Keep us underneath your watchful eye. Bless this day. Bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, I humbly do pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we wish all those who are celebrating this birthday this week a very happy birthday. We pray that God will continue to bless you as you grow in his grace and favor. Before we start, this would be a good time to pause the video and begin writing out this week's lesson and the memory verbs. Ready? Ready? Let's, Let's begin. begin. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called A New Name and a New Friend. The memory verse is from Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. It says, God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Today's message is God's grace includes everyone. Sometimes people call us by our nickname. Maybe you have a nickname. Usually, something we do or say can give us a nickname. Sometimes people call us nasty names. The early believers were called names, and one of them stuck. And did you know it's still being used today? It was becoming dangerous to be a believer in Jesus and remain in Jerusalem. The Jewish leaders were putting people in prison. Sometimes they were beaten and sometimes even put to death. So many of the new believers began moving away from Jerusalem. Many new believers moved to villages and towns and cities. They were so happy and full of the joy that comes from knowing Jesus. They just could not stop telling others about their new faith. The news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection began to spread everywhere. This was not what the priests and rabbis had in mind. They didn't want people to tell others about Jesus. Some of the new believers moved to Antioch. A large number of Jewish people lived there. Antioch was an important city. It was beautiful and famous, but it was also a very wicked city. It was dedicated to the heathen Greek gods. Until now, most of the believers were Jews, and they shared the good news about Jesus with their Jewish friends and neighbors. But when the believers moved to Antioch, they began to tell their new neighbors about Jesus. In fact, they told everybody. They told Jews who lived there, and they told Gentiles, people who were not Jewish. Telling Gentiles was something new, something different. The Lord blessed the believers as they shared the good news. 
and great numbers of people joined the early church. The news about the Gentile converts spread back to the apostles and other believers in Jerusalem. Some of the church leaders there were worried. They were not sure that God wanted everyone to hear the good news. After all, the Jews were God's chosen people. So the Jerusalem believers asked Barnabas to help. Barnabas was a good man, full of faith and filled with the Holy Spirit. He was asked to travel to Antioch and find out what was happening. When Barnabas arrived in Antioch, he saw that the believers there had truly been blessed by God. They really did understand the grace of God. They believed that God loved all people and wanted them to love one another. This made Barnabas very happy. He encouraged the believers to remain true to the Lord. He preached to the Gentiles and many more people decided to follow Jesus. Barnabas soon realized that he needed help. There were so many people to talk to, so many to tell about Jesus. Who could help him? He thought about Saul. He remembered how Saul had changed after meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus. Even his name had changed. Now he was called Paul. So Barnabas began searching for him. He traveled to the city of Tarsus, where Paul had been born. There he found Paul teaching others about Jesus. Soon he told Paul about the great work to be done in Antioch. So Paul and Barnabas traveled back to Antioch. There they began working together to spread the good news. For a whole year they shared the good news about Jesus and many people, both Jews and Gentiles, believed. Because the believers talked so much about Christ, they were called Christians. Soon the name spread all around the Roman world. But it was in the heathen city of Antioch that the name was first used. And it was in that city that Saul, now called Paul, began his work among the Gentiles. God had called him to do a special work. What work has God called you to do? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. Welcome back, boys and girls. I hope that you enjoyed today's story, A New Name and a New Friend. Our story can be found in Acts 11, verse 19 through 26. Acts 11, verse 19 through 26. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then the news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad, and encouraged them all that with the purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Today's memory verse can be found in Acts 10, verse 34 through 35. Acts 10, verses 34 through 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, 
But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. This week's lesson is about who can obtain the grace of God. The Jews were sure that it was solely for them, but Peter brings in a different perspective that opens the door of salvation to the Gentiles. Peter had a dream of the Lord setting a table of unclean animals and birds before him. Then a voice said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter refused because according to Jewish customs, these foods were not clean and therefore could not be eaten. You can read more about this in Leviticus chapter 11. But the voice said, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This occurred three times before Peter was sent with three men from Caesarea. And when they had reached a man's house, he heard about their encounter with an angel who said that Peter would come and tell them how to save him in his household. There Peter preached of Jesus and the good news, and the Holy Spirit descended on him and their household. Peter told all these things to the Jews in Jerusalem and said, If therefore God gave them, referring to the Gentiles, the same gifts as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? From there the gift of Jesus' salvation was shared with the people who weren't Jewish. Believers who had left Jerusalem after Stephen's death didn't hear about Peter's story, so they continued to preach the gospel to only the Jews in Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. In Antioch, some believers began telling the good news about Jesus to the Greeks as well, and the Lord was with them. Many believed and turned to God, so Barnabas was sent from the church in Jerusalem. Barnabas saw the grace of God in the church, and he was glad, so he encouraged the believers to stay with the Lord. From there, Barnabas left and brought back Saul from Tarsus to Antioch, and they organized a church and taught the new believers for a whole year. There in Antioch, the term Christian was first coined to refer to a believer in Jesus Christ. Parents, please take the time to help answer the following questions with your children. Question 1. Why did the believers begin to move away from Jerusalem? Question two. What was so special about the believers who moved to Antioch? Question three. Why did Barnabas ask Paul to come to Antioch? Question four. What were the believers first called in Antioch? And question five. Was the good news of Jesus just for the Jews? Is anyone excluded from God's grace? In summary, in Antioch, believers became Christians as Barnabas and Paul began assembling the church and teaching the people, completely establishing this gift of salvation for the Jews and the Gentiles. God's grace is not limited, rather it is unlimited. God's grace is available to everyone. Jesus died for the whole world, not just the Jewish world. The grace of God is God loving the unlovable, pursuing after those who are running away from him, and even winning those who persecute Christians. Grace is God's free gift of unconditional love that we don't deserve. We are channels of grace, when we show God's grace to those around us. It may be difficult at times, but God is always there to help us, and his grace includes everyone, even us, when we fall short. As we pray, let us ask God to help us show his grace to others. So bow your heads and close your eyes to pray with us. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Dear me, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just being with us and keeping us and watching over us. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your Holy Spirit and most of all your love in Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all these things because they are gifts unto us that you have given to us. So Lord, we ask that you help us to use your gifts 
and to share your gifts with others. Lord, we thank you for your gift of grace, and we ask that you help us to show other people your grace by showing them the love that you have shown us first. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, your power, and your strength. We ask that you help us and you keep giving us the strength to do what is right and what is good in your sight. But most of all, Lord, we ask that you give us the Holy Spirit to empower us to do your work always. So Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. We praise your name for all the things that you have done in the past, the things you're doing now, and the things you're preparing us to do in the future. So Lord, we thank you and praise your name always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us in Sabbath School Online. Just like Bob and Larry always say, God made you special and he loves you very much. Shalom. Shalom.